Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this amazing world. My name is Donovan Jolly, and welcome everybody once again for another amazing video of DIY investing. In today's video, I'm gonna be looking back, covering some of my recent analysis, and explaining to you guys how I'm actually going to be looking for new positions inside of this market. We're at a very important time as Bitcoin's approaching our resistance that I laid out in my last video. It's really important that we understand exactly how to play the market from here. If Bitcoin dips, how can we position ourselves to make the most profit over the next month? And if Bitcoin breaks out, where will we be looking Looking for next to take some profits. I'm going to be covering all of this thought and perspective as well as taking a look at the big picture trends so that we can all be informed together over this next month because there's a lot of profit to be had. We just need a sound strategy on how to execute. If you're new and just finding this channel, always remember to do me a favor by leaving a like, comment, and subscribing to this channel for more updates. Always remember to click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos like the one provided for you here. And make sure you guys sign up and join the Discord server of over 20,000 members and growing. If you guys want to share your own thoughts, feelings and perspectives on the market links are going to be provided for you in the description to go ahead and sign up on top of that if you're new just getting into these markets maybe you made a few mistakes maybe you're just looking to further your own education i have a free ebook that's also linked in the description that i know is going to help you guys out tremendously which is why i've made it for free links are provided for you in the description to download and with all that being said guys let's jump right into this amazing video today Alrighty guys, so here we are. To start off today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Bitcoin, covering some thoughts and perspectives inside of this market. Now, one of the biggest things I wanted to give you guys is it really just follows back in touching up on my last analysis that I had here in Bitcoin. Now, at the time, Bitcoin was much lower. It was probably right around here at about $34,000. And what I was watching for was really two different scenarios. Now, we have our first resistance here at about 40K, maybe $41,000, approximately within that range. And that's indicated by this red line and this red resistance box. We know that this has been a strong resistance because we got rejected here originally inside of the sell-off. We consolidated, we made one more attempt at breaking out, and we once again got rejected. And that's when we had our biggest sell-off inside of this range. But the thing to understand, guys, is we never broke below our important threshold, which was pretty much 29K. We had held support above this level. We pretty much just ranged here for about 65 days. Nothing happened, nothing changed. And so the big thing to understand here, guys, is now that we're inside of this range, we've established a pretty, uh, we've established a pretty big range here at about 41,000, all the way down to about 29,000. This is our big range that we're following. Now, as it stands right now, in my last video, I talked about two different scenarios here. I talked about scenario one being a rally up to this resistance at 41k followed by a pullback back down to about 34 to 34 and a half thousand dollars this was my scenario number one if we could not clear above this resistance here now scenario two was a little bit different scenario two showed us breaking out of this resistance rallying upwards of about 47 to 48 K and then getting a pullback back down above um, 41,000 so it would just be basically flipping 41,000 resistance and then you know we would expect to see continuation from there so these were the two scenarios that I had laid out for you guys and to, as it stands right now, I wanted to dive into what I actually think is going to materialize, which one of these scenarios seems more likely. So let's go to the four hour time frame and let's actually take a look at what I'm seeing here. And let's remove these drawing tools real quick so that we can just summarize in a much easier to understand way. So first things first, guys, by taking a look at this chart, we can see that we're right smack dab on top of this resistance. Well, I shouldn't say on top, we're actually below this resistance, and this has been a strong level that we've rejected off of a number of times. We hit it a few times over here and rejected, we hit it over here and rejected, we hit it right here and rejected again, and so it's acted as a pretty strong level. Now, as it stands right now, when I pull up this chart, and when it comes to analyzing what direction I think it's gonna head, I have something to share with you guys. Now, first things first, what we're noticing inside of the price chart is we actually saw a higher high here. We see this higher high in the price chart, but notice here on the RSI, we're actually getting a lower high. This is what you call your classic example of bearish divergence. Now, with it being on the four hour time frame, it's not for sure that this is gonna materialize, but generally speaking, whenever you see um, this bearish or bullish divergence forming on the four hour time frame, it's a very good indicator that in the short term, we could be getting exhausted. In this case, we've been going up, the bulls are getting exhausted, and it would make sense that us hitting at this resistance, us getting a lower high on the RSI, 
RSI and higher highs in price, this to me is going to materialize and ultimately bring Bitcoin lower. So this is why I actually believe that my uh, scenario B, or I should say the first scenario that I had in that video was us pulling back right here and then falling back down to about 34 and a half to, uh, to 34,000 dollars, somewhere right around in that range. Which, if we actually pull up our trading plan tool from where we peaked at, that would approximately be, you know, about. 15% uh, decline, which is exactly what I was talking about. What I laid out in my final video was the potential that if we do get one of these bigger corrections, whether it happens up here at 48K or whether it happens right here where we're at at 41K, I laid out the potential that what I was personally going to be looking for was low leverage long positions. I wanted to accumulate on that dip, whether it happens right now or whether we break above this level and flip 41K. Either scenario, I was looking for low leverage longs in that process. And so now when I take a look at the chart, I analyze the price action. To me, this looks like it's going to materialize and we're going to get one more dip, which guys is nothing to be so scared of just because from the lows, I mean, we rallied up close to 40%. There hasn't been any significant pullback. This was all just uptrending. And now that we're actually looking a little bit weak based off of the bulls perspectives, I think it's a little bit more likely that we are going to get one more dip. Now, this is the dip that I was watching for. If we do get this dip from where we're at today, I'm going to be looking to long somewhere between thirty-four and a half to thirty-four thousand dollars. Thirty-four and a half is really where I'm going to be looking for positions. I'll start accumulating around there. And if we go any little bit lower, that's just going to be a greater opportunity for me to buy. Now, that's personally what I'm going to be watching out for. I'm strong believer that we're still bullish, even if we get this sell-off. In fact, this sell-off is merely just going to act as an opportunity for the people that didn't long the bottom down here at support to actually get back in at a safer risk to reward because here's the thing guys I mean technically you're not going to get a safer risk to reward than longing support which was down here at 29k however that is going to be the peak point of financial fear and most people are going to be really shaken out by that time I mean every single time we hit support you just see this trove of bearish uh, news these bearish calls on Twitter and that's literally all it was every single time we hit support and so that's where we're going to see the most fear, which most people aren't actually going to be willing to accumulate. They would rather say, oh man, I'd just rather wait for a higher high and then buy the dip after that, which this is going to be your opportunity of doing so. We have made a higher high. I mean, technically we're still below resistance at 41K, but we had a big bounce on the upside. We tagged resistance. And so this sell-off is merely going to be us making that first higher high in the trend. We'll find support and then we'll rally back up and that's when we'll probably get the upswing to 47 to 48K, pull back, hit this level, maybe consolidate here, and then go up even higher. This is kind of the scenario that I'm personally gonna be watching for with Bitcoin and if you guys would rather wait for 41K to be flipped, maybe you're a little bit more bearish, maybe you're a little bit more skeptical. I mean, you don't have to long this move, this sell-off that we're gonna see. You could just wait until we completely, without a doubt, make a higher high, flip this 41K resistance, and that to me would be the golden opportunity for people to pick up longs. My guess is this, if we get this pullback like I'm expecting, this is gonna be a great entry at about 34 and a half thousand, right? Now, the next run up, I don't necessarily think that we're gonna get a ton of consolidation back on this level. What could happen is, you know, maybe we get a little bit of consolidation down here at 34,000, we rally up, and once we actually flip 41K, you know, it might just be one little sell-off that we get down here that immediately gets bought up, and then we go up higher, something along the lines of that. That is something that we could very easily see, because oftentimes whenever you get these support and resistance flips, most people kind of think that it's just gonna sit there forever and ever and give them plenty of time to get in, when in actuality, guys, this $41,000 level is gonna be a very significant level that a lot of smart money is gonna be watching for. This would be a first confirmed higher high. Technically, in this move, you know, it would be a higher high, but we're still below resistance, and so for somebody that's a little bit less skeptical, or what I should say, somebody that's more skeptical somebody that has a little bit more of a conservative trading plan, they would be watching for this 41K level. And actually, I do know of a lot of people that got really bearish up here and have been shorting this entire move down. And that's actually what they seem to be in agreement of. I'm just going to wait until, I'm just going to short until we actually flip this 41K level. And at that point, you guys should expect to see a lot of buy pressure coming into that market. And so it might not last as long as you'd think. The time to be moving once we actually broke out of this level, I would just set buy orders at like 40 
41 and a half to $40,000, something like that in between that range. And that's where I would look to accumulate if I was a little bit more skeptical on the market. For me, I'm gonna be looking along this sell-off that we're about to get here. That was really my scenario A that I was watching for. You know, hit this resistance, pull back about 10 to 15% and then ultimately go back up again. So that's what I'm gonna be watching out for with Bitcoin. Really guys, the macro stays the same. I believe the macro trend will continue to go up, make higher highs, and will be above $200,000 per Bitcoin by the end of the year. That's what I'm gonna to continue to hold to. My personal target's been 250K, so you know that's just my number. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, because I'm once again gonna be selling based off of the time frames. but that's kind of the number I've had in my head for the last two and a half years. I'm gonna to continue to watch that number and see how it goes. So this is my analysis for Bitcoin. Let's actually talk about Ethereum here and some thoughts and perspectives with this market. Now guys, I've seen two different ways to draw this chart and scenario A that I originally drew in my last video was this. Um, everybody was kind of watching, myself included, for this descending triangle. Is it gonna play out, is it not? Well, technically we broke outside of this, but the thing about trend lines, guys, is there's not one specific trend line that you can draw that's just gonna be the ultimate answer. You can draw specific trend lines and you can get different answers. And I'm gonna share with you guys exactly what I mean right here. Technically speaking, we could still be below this resistance. Look at this. So depending on how you draw this resistance, we've rejected here, we rejected here, we rejected here. And technically this wick rejected there and I wouldn't be surprised if we end up selling off once again from this level. Because technically, depending on where you actually draw this descending triangle, we can still be inside of it. You know, That was one of the things that happened inside of the last bear market for Bitcoin. As you guys recall, we topped out at $20,000. We had that big 70% correction all the way back down to 6,000. And from 6,000, we, we went sideways up and down in that descending triangle for approximately six to eight months. And in the side of that time, I remember as somebody that was watching that, there were so many different people drawing different sorts of trend lines inside of that sell-off. And there was often times where people would draw their trend line wrong. It would look like Bitcoin was breaking out, specifically if I was to draw it like this, right? This would make it look like Ethereum was breaking out and we would get this move outside, everybody would get real bullish and then we would just immediately reject back down and prove everybody wrong. Hey, redraw your trend line, you didn't do it right type of thing. And this is something that I wanna pay, want you guys to pay attention for. Now, I don't know exactly which way you know is the proper way to draw this. I will say that we technically are below this resistance and so for a more conservative approach, I would say to draw this trend line this way and once we get a break from this level here, which would you know be about 24,000, if we can get a break outside of this trend line, that to me is gonna cement ourselves as being bullish, right? But if we're below that level, you know, I'm personally gonna structure myself a little bit in a more conservative approach with Ethereum. And this to me is my conservative approach moving forward. Now guys, one of the things that I'm actually gonna be watching out for for the next little while with Ethereum, um, because this is actually gonna be the way that I'm drawing this trend line, I personally think that if Bitcoin gets rejected, Ethereum will also get rejected right here. Now, if Bitcoin ends up pulling back 15%, you know, 10, 15%, whatever that number ends up being, I would assume that Ethereum has the potential of pulling back, um, probably back down to about 2K. So about 2K is right here. That's what I would be watching for. Now for a bull scenario, what we wanna see happen with Ethereum is we would like to see this level at 2000 hold. It's a psychological level, it's an even number, um, it's a really important number for Ethereum because it's slightly above the all-time highs, but we have a load of support right throughout this period. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is gonna be the most bullish scenario that can happen. ETH holds support at 2K, and then we ultimately break out of this descending resistance, whereas there is a bearish scenario here where potentially ETH rejects here and then falls all the way back down to support and if this is gonna be the case, if ETH falls all the way back down to support here, I would expect that this descending resistance would materialize and ETH would ultimately fall back down to the previous all-time high, which if we zoom out here, let's go to the three-day time frame, the previous all-time high is pretty much going to be about right here, approximately. 
$1,300. It's not, uh, technically it'd be like $1,450 or something, but I would be watching out for $1,300 as my target if this descending resistance or descending triangle ends up coming to fruition. This is just a thought that I'm having. This is really how I'm gonna be looking to trade Ethereum. Um, this is just what it looks like to me. And one of the other indications that I do have here with the potential that this descending resistance could materialize is actually if we come over here and take a look at the chart of Solana. Now Solana is pretty much just, you know, a, a, kind of like the same as Ethereum for the most part. It's faster, less fees. It's better than Ethereum in a lot of ways. Now. This is a project that got really hyped and had a pretty significant rally on the upside. Now, something to keep a note of, guys, is this to me looks like the most obvious descending triangle in the entire market here. And we can see this, as indicated, every time we hit this support level, which we've hit it a few times, um, it produces, the first bounce was pretty big, right? Big bounce, rejection. Second bounce wasn't as big. We got rejected third bounce here is once again consolidating and every single bounce that we get continues to be weaker and weaker than the last. This is your classic example of seller exhaust or what I should say buyer exhaustion. Every single time the sellers drop the market, we get this bounce on the upside and the bulls are weaker and weaker each time. The more times that we bounce off of this support, it's going to end up acting the same as what Bitcoin did. If you guys notice all the way back to the last cycle of Bitcoin, let's go take a look here. I will share with you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So in the last cycle for Bitcoin, we bounced off of this support level here at about 6,800 or 5,800, I should say. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Notice how every single attempt on this trend line produced a weaker bounce. This was the first bounce, rejection. This was the second bounce, rejection. This was the third bounce, rejection. And then it just pretty much went sideways before we crashed to 3,200. This is your classic example of what buyer exhaustion looks like. You have this big run up, you have the initial sell off, and this to me looks just a lot like Solana, no matter what way you try and shake it. Same type of a move here. Lower lows, well I shouldn't say lower lows, but lower highs throughout this entire period, which ultimately, because of the fact Bitcoin looks a little bit weak at resistance, showing bearish divergence, if Bitcoin pulls back, you guys already know what's gonna happen to the altcoins. We're gonna get a rejection here, and my guess is it's gonna end up doing something like this. And we would get one more low, all the way back down here to about 13 bucks, which if this is the case, you know, maybe it's a little bit more likely that ETH ends up pulling all the way back and that descending triangle that I was pointing out to you guys ends up finalizing and coming into fruition. We could very easily see that type of a move play out here. And this is kind of what it would look like. If um, $2,000 doesn't hold a support, I would expect something along the lines of this. We would sell back down onto support at about you know, $1,700 approximately, this level that we've bounced off of a few times here. And we would sell off, bounce, and we'd probably get rejected at 2,000, and that level would act as resistance rather than support, which would ultimately bring us back down to one more low, all the way back down to $1,300. This is just something that I'm personally watching out for. I think it's a little bit um, likely in the, in the likeliness that support fails at $2,000, because the thing is, guys, this is just a pretty obvious looking descending triangle no matter what way I try and shake it. And if we are ultimately gonna be bullish, I want to see $2,000 hold. I, that's a really important level based off of my trading plan. If it doesn't hold, I would expect that this descending res, or triangle would come and we would actually fall to one more big low. Big shakeout, everybody would get super scared, panicked, but you know, it's once again a good opportunity. And that's kind of where I'm looking for my low leverage longs, regardless of what ends up playing out whether support holds a 2K and we start going up again, or whether this descending triangle finalizes and we fall for one more low, the big thing to understand here is we're still above this all-time high. The previous all-time high of the last cycle is here. So even if we fall all the way back down and retest that level, it's not gonna be bearish in the macro trend. The macro trend will still look strong and I would expect to buy back and then we would be doing something along the lines of this, a very big impulse as we go for our final rally in that cycle. That's kind of the point that I've been trying to make here for you guys. This is my trading plan. This is what I'm personally gonna be watching out for. If this is the scenario, I mean, Bitcoin dominance looks stronger than the alts. You know, we could get another shakeout, altcoins fall to a new low, Bitcoin makes a higher high. And that's generally what you're gonna typically see inside of Bitcoin's bottoms. It'll have this big crash, 
once Bitcoin first starts to make higher highs, you know, oftentimes the altcoins just continue to fall to lower lows because there's less confidence inside of those markets. And so I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But once again, guys, if you're just wondering from a perspective on what to watch for, watch for $2,000. If, if support falls at $2,000, I'm personally going to be leaning a much more bearish uh, scenario that would pinpoint us going all the way back down to $1,300. That's personally what I'm going to be watching out for. But regardless, guys, what that would signal is, you know, just a retest of the previous all-time high, which we would ultimately be going into new all-time highs based off of my trading plan. So anyways, guys, this is the video I had for you. Just wanted to give you guys this quick little update on my previous analysis talking about Bitcoin. Wanted to give you guys this little bit of a warning because I am expecting a pullback. I will personally be looking to long certain markets that look like they're showing strength. You know, maybe altcoins look really weak when Bitcoin pulls back and I may just only long Bitcoin. That may be a scenario that I'm actually looking for. So I'm going to update. I'm going to give you guys all of the um, new updates as we actually transpire from here. Obviously, we always want to see the most bullish scenario but as it stands right now, I just think that the short term looks a little bit weak for Bitcoin, which is ultimately going to spell more downside for alt. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you found value in this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos and updates. If you guys would like to join the Discord server or download my free ebook, links are going to be provided for you in the description for all of that stuff. Now, with that being said, if you guys want to actually sign up for my video course or signals, links are also going to be provided in the description for that. Thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate each and every one of you so much and I look forward to watching you guys ultimately make this same financial fortune that me, my friends, my family and many other people have already done for themselves. Thank you guys so much for watching and with that being said I'll catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.